Good morning, everyone. I'm Pat Summerer. I'm a member of the Deacons, and I'm here to give announcements this morning, and there are quite a few, so I will try and keep it brief. If you're online, folks, hello online, uh, please remember to be muted when we do uh, any of our responsive and unison prayers. Thank you. Beginning this week, we're relaxing COVID protocols according to the, de the Deacons' decisions. Uh, masks are now optional if vaccinated. Uh, we'll begin passing our offering plate during the service, and we're going to have coffee and tea and just a tiny refreshment in the fellowship hall. So please join us for the coffee hour. I've made 24 cups of coffee, so please stop and have a cup of coffee or tea. We are continuing to accept donations for humanitarian aid for the people of Ukraine. Uh, please give in the envelopes provided or make it clear in the donations for Ukraine. There's also a new day, N-U-D-A-Y for Ukraine, in the city of Ellsworth. And there's a flyer here that I will leave out in Fellowship Hall so you can read all about the needs and see if there's anything that uh, you can do. We want to do as much as we can for Ukraine. Um, the church website platform has suddenly gone down and is no longer supported, so we need to redo our whole website. And Doug uh, has been doing that for eight, ten years, and he could use some help or a replacement uh, to work on websites. So if you are interested in that, um, please talk to me or talk to Doug or talk to TJ. Uh, we'd really love to get some help for him to create and maintain a new website. Another new item is um, I brought up the idea at Council of Deacons about having a breakfast after our sunrise service. I think it's a wonderful um, addition to the sunrise service to be able to join together and, and have some food. And it also would open it up to the community if they want to come see a little brief service and then come join us for breakfast. But I can't do it alone. I need some help. My idea is to have egg casseroles, easy to do the night before, leave them in the fridge, we pop them in the oven at quarter of six, we go to the service, we come back, they're done. Um, we would also need some muffins and some fruit, and we can make coffee and tea. So really, it's pretty easy breezy. It just means getting up at 5.30 in the morning to come over here and be a part of that. So if you are interested in helping me with that, uh, please let me know. If I don't get any response, I'm just going to say never mind. So please respond. <laughs> please, uh, you know, let me know. Also, we talked about um, the problem with the speed on Route 1 here through Hancock and how people just don't slow down, and it's such a problem. So the DOT is going to have a meeting on April 16th at 1 p.m. in our church parking lot uh, to talk about this problem. I think it's the 6th. The 6th? The 6th of April. Oh, okay. We've been misinformed. We'll, we'll check that then. I think the letter. The letter I said was told and then I received the letter. Good. Thank you for that correction. Mm -hmm. On the 6th, uh, other establishments have been contacted for their input as well, so meet at the parking lot to be able to uh, tell them what a problem this is. Um, one more flyer I have is uh, for John Bell of the Iona community. Reverend John Bell, celebrated preacher, hymn writer, song leader, and inspiring member of the Iona community of Scotland, will lead us in singing and exploring various dimensions of faithful and engaged living. All events are open to the public. There is a free will offering. And the ones that are nearest to us, if you want to write them down in this flyer, will be out there. Um, Monday, March 28th, in Acadia National Park, from 10 to 12. Or 6 to 7.30 in uh, Bar Harbor Congregational Church. You can also Zoom that. Um, there's a workshop. Oh, I see this is something different. There's a workshop called Missing Women in Scripture. Uh, so anyway, this flyer will be out there. Please peruse it. Looks like some really interesting stuff and many different locations. Uh, birthdays. Vivian Foss on the 20th. 
Evelyn Thornson on the 21st, and Savannah Havey. On the 23rd, it's Lincoln Erlenbach. And next Sunday, Pam Bowie, in case you want to send a card ahead of time. Does anyone have any other announcements or any other birthdays to celebrate? Vicki. Put them, put them, plug in. Uh, there is a new sign up sheet for uh, liturgists out on the bulletin board. Um, if you don't want to get a call from me asking about being a liturgist, let me know. Um, if you are willing to be a liturgist, get in touch with me, sign up on the sign up sheet. Um, you don't have to be in person to be a liturgist. Do it from Zoom. All information will be given to you prior to Sunday. Um, it's very easy. Just you need to feel comfortable doing it, and we love to have the variety of, of people um, and voices and faces uh, that can do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other announcements, David? A second, we'll get you a microphone. If anybody would like a set of offering envelopes, I've got plenty. And folks on Zoom, if you'd like a set of envelopes, offering envelopes, please uh, give me a call or send me an email or get in touch with me in some fashion. Thank you. If that's all, let's center ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds for our worship this morning. <clears throat>
morning. Morning. And welcome. Wonderful to see familiar faces and vaguely familiar faces and brand new faces. So welcome, whether you're here in the pews or whether you're joining us online, whether you're here for the first time or you've been here all of your life. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here with us. No matter your political persuasion, no matter your gender identity, no matter where in this world you were born, you are welcome here with us. And again, we are glad you are here. We are the Union Congregational Church of Hancock, an open and affirming United Church of Christ denomination. Please stand in body or spirit and join us in singing our intro, the first verse of There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, in our Black Hymnal number 23. who thirst, come to the waters, come to the wells. Our souls thirst for you, God. We lift up our hands and call our name. Come without money, come without cost, incline your ears and listen for good news. Our flesh faints for you, O God. Our lips sing praises, beholding your glory. Come, eat good. Come, feast upon you true riches, be filled with that which sustains you. Our souls are satisfied in you, O God. In the shadow of your wings, we sing with joy. I'll invite you to turn to one another, either online, turn and try to make eye contact with someone, or here in the pews, turn to someone, we're still offering the peace with American Sign Language. Peace be with you. And also with you. And as our Deacon Robin lights our peace candle, I'll read from a poem from Teresa of Avila. She lived from 1515 to 1582 in Spain, where she entered a convent when she was 18, and later earned a reputation as a mystic reformer and writer who experienced divine visions. She writes, Christ has no body. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Please join in singing our hymn, This Is My Song, in our black hymnal number 591. <clears throat>
is to remain innocent to the invocation. Offer them abundance, God of change. We come into this hour with hopeful expectations as we travel on our journeys of transformation this land season. We know that you are with us, you walk beside us, your presence surrounds us. Help us to bear fruit as we walk on this road. Remind us that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that your rod and your staff comfort us, that you have prepared a feast for us where all can come and eat. Keep us forever on the path as we worship you in spirit and in the truth. Amen. Those of you online should be able to see and hear the children's message just fine, and those of you in the sanctuary should also be able to either see it on this music stand or up on the screen. The Fall of Freddie the Leaf, A Story of Life for All Ages by Leo Biscalia. In the sanctuary, would it help to be on speaker view? Do you want that? Now we've got Gina with the deer in the headlights look. So, don't know why that is. Hi, Gina. All right, we won't, we won't leave it there. Yeah, sorry about that. Anybody who wants to, please move up toward the, the front pews. Fall of Freddie the Leaf. Spring had passed. So had summer. Freddie the Leaf had grown. He had grown large. His midsection was wide and strong. And his five extensions were firm and pointed. He had first appeared in spring as a small sprout on a rather large branch near the top of a tall tree. Freddie was surrounded by hundreds of other leaves just like himself, or so it seemed. Soon he discovered that no two leaves were alike, even though they were on the same tree. Alfred was the leaf next to him, Ben was the leaf on his right, and Claire was the lovely leaf overhead. They had all grown up together. They had learned to dance in the spring breezes, bask lazily in the summer sun, and wash off in the cooling rains. But it was Daniel who was Freddie's best friend. He was the largest leaf on the limb and seemed to have been there before anyone else. It appeared to Freddie that Daniel was also the wisest among them. It was Daniel who told them that they were part of a tree. It was Daniel who explained that they were growing in a public park. It was Daniel who told them that the tree had strong roots which were hidden in the ground below. He explained about the birds who came to sit on their branch and sing morning songs. He explained about the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the seasons. Freddie loved being a leaf. He loved his branch, his light leafy friends, his place high in the sky, the wind that jostled him about, the sun rays that warmed him, the moon that covered him with soft white shadows. Summer had been especially nice. The long hot days felt good and the warm nights were peaceful and dreamy. There were many people in the park that summer. They often came and sat under Freddie's tree. Daniel told him that giving shade was part of his purpose. What's a purpose, Freddie had asked. A reason for being, Daniel had answered. To make things more pleasant for others is a reason for being. To make shade for old people who come to escape the heat of their homes is a reason for being. To provide a cool place for children to come and play. To fan with our leaves the picnickers who come to eat on checkered tablecloths. These are all reasons for being. 
Freddie especially liked the old people. They sat so quietly on the cool grass and hardly ever moved. They talked in whispers of times past. The children were fun too, even though they sometimes tore holes in the bark of the tree or carved their names into it. Still, it was fun to watch them move so fast and to laugh so much. But Freddie's summer soon passed. It vanished on an October night. He had never felt it so cold. All the leaves shivered with the cold. They were coated with a thin layer of white, which quickly melted and left them dew drenched and sparkling in the morning sun. Again, it was Daniel who explained that they had experienced their first frost, the sign that it was fall and that winter would come soon. Almost at once, the whole tree, in fact, the whole park was transformed into a blaze of color. There was hardly a green leaf left. Alfred had turned a deep yellow, Ben had become a bright orange, Claire had become a blazing red, Daniel a deep purple, and Freddie was red and gold and blue. How beautiful they all looked. Freddie and his friends had made their tree a rainbow. Why did we turn different colors, Freddie asked, when we are on the same tree? Each of us is different. We have had different experiences. We have faced the sun differently. We have cast shade differently. Why should we not have different colors? Daniel said matter-of-factly. Daniel told Freddie that this wonderful season was called fall. One day, a very strange thing happened. The same breezes that in the past had made them dance began to push and pull at their stems, almost as if they were angry. This caused some of the leaves to be torn from their branches and swept up in the wind, tossed about and dropped softly to the ground. All the leaves became frightened. What's happening, they asked each other in whispers. It's what happens in fall, Daniel told them. It's the time for leaves to change their home. Some people call it to die. Will we all die, Freddie asked. Yes, Daniel answered. Everything dies, no matter how big or small, how weak or strong. We first do our job. We experience the sun and the moon, the wind and the rain. We learn to dance and to laugh. Then we die. I won't die, said Freddie with determination. Will you, Daniel? Yes, answered Daniel, when it's my time. When is that, asked Freddie. No one knows for sure, Daniel responded. Freddie noticed that the other leaves continued to fall. He thought it must be their time. He saw that some of the leaves lashed back at the wind before they fell. Others simply let go and dropped quietly. Soon the tree was almost bare. I'm afraid to die, Freddie told Daniel. I don't know what's down there. We all fear what we do not know, Freddie. It's natural, Daniel reassured him. Yet you were not afraid when spring became summer. You were not afraid when summer became fall. They were natural changes. Why should you be afraid of the season of death? Does the tree die too, Freddie asked? Someday. But there is something stronger than the tree. It is life. That lasts forever, and we are all a part of life. Where will we go when we die? No one knows for sure. That's the great mystery. Will we return in the spring? We may not, but life will. Then what has been the reason for all of this? Freddie continued to question. Why were we here at all? only have, why were we here at all if we only have to fall and die? Daniel answered in his matter-of-fact way. It's been about the sun and the moon. It's been about happy times together. It's been about the shade and the old people and the children. It's been about colors and fall. It's been about seasons. Isn't that enough? That afternoon in the golden light of dusk, Daniel let go. He fell effortlessly. He seemed to smile peacefully as he fell. Goodbye for now, Freddy, he said. Then Freddy was alone, the only leaf left on his branch. The first snow fell the following morning. It was soft, white, and gentle. 
but it was bitter cold. There was hardly any sun that day, and the day was very short. Freddy found himself losing his color, becoming brittle. It was constantly cold, and the snow weighed heavily upon him. At dawn, the wind came that took Freddy from his branch. It didn't hurt at all. He felt himself float quietly, gently and softly downward. As he fell, he saw, he saw the whole tree for the first time. How strong and firm it was. He was sure that it would live for a long time and he knew that he had been a part of its life and it made him proud. Freddy landed on a clump of snow. It somehow felt soft and even warm. In this new position, he was more comfortable than he had ever been. He closed his eyes and fell asleep. He did not know that spring would follow winter and that snow would melt into water. He did not know that, when, that what appeared to be his useless dried self would join with the water and serve to make the trees stronger. Most of all, he did not know that there, asleep in the tree in the ground, were already plans for new leaves in the spring. The last page says the beginning. So I invite you to pray with me, children online, people in pews, people online. First of all, this book is another of the gifts, Bill Reeves Legacy Apple Tree Books. Thank you, Legacy of Bill. And thank you, God, for the seasons of life and for the teachers you place before us, whether they be children or adults. May we always be willing to learn. Amen. Testament reading is from Luke 13, 6 through 9. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the, to the vine dresser, Lo, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, let it alone, sir, this year also, till I dig about it and put on manure. And if it bears fruit next year, well and good. And if not, you can cut it down. Thus ends the reading.
Let us pray with him. O Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. On my walk yesterday morning, as part of the Courting the Particular Lenten study through the BTS Center, I was paying attention to the trees and the bushes along Thorn Road. Marcescence. Marcescence is the retention of dead plant organs that normally are shed. I was guided to pay attention to marcescent leaves or fronds that are withered but remain attached to the stem. Most of the trees along my walk were bare, but some had leaves still hanging on long after the usual season of letting go. We are encouraged to be in a time of contemplation for these six weeks of Lent. I encourage you, look around you today, look around you this week, pay attention. Do you notice any instances of marcescence? How about in our lives? What should we cut away? Or what should we let go? What is working? What is bearing fruit? Where are we being led to grow and change? The book of Luke is the only one of the four Gospels in our Bible that offers us the parable of the fig tree. Jesus used down-to-earth examples, relatable situations, with surprising outcomes. What do we have to learn from our parable this morning? Why would a gardener tell the landowner to give a tree, non-productive for the past three years, more time and attention and fertilizer? Why waste another year of time and resources? Cut it down. Don't waste the soil. Don't waste the fertilizer. Don't waste your time. Unless, of course, that fig tree is you, or me, or someone we love. Then we are grateful for the gardener God who does not give up on us in our dormant seasons of life. A God that remains steadfastly with us during our grief, our depression, our illness, our addiction. A God that rejoices with us when we bear good fruit. A God that suffers with us when we are stunted and stymied by what life throws at us. Reading between the lines of this scripture, practicing some midrash, leads me to wonder, what is the situation like one year later between the landowner and the gardener? Scenario one, they rejoice in the good fruit that the tree is producing. Scenario two, the tree is still not bearing fruit. The gardener and the landowner agree to again give the tree one more year. Scenario three, the tree is still not bearing fruit. The landowner tells the gardener to cut the tree down. It is meaningful that the gardener does not say that he will cut down the tree if it does not bear fruit. The gardener says, if it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. I think the use of the word you is significant. We sometimes give up on ourselves. We sometimes give up on each other. Our gardener God patiently waits for us to thrive. The gardener reminds us to be compassionate toward the less fortunate, and yes, compassionate toward ourselves when our lives feel empty or barren. Ours is a God of compassion, a God of grace. The gardener asks for more time. They will dig around the tree and fertilize it, nourish it, they will treat it just the same as the trees that are producing fruit, knowing there are no guarantees. When contemplating the landowner, I was reminded of the definition of insanity, the 
which is popular, popular among my Alcoholics Anonymous friends. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. So often, we are like the impatient landowner. We want results and we want them now. But what are we willing to do to help foster change and growth in ourselves or others? Finally, after the third year of looking critically at the fig tree that wasn't producing fruit, the landowner complained to the gardener. We changed the dynamics. This outburst, cut it down, changed the relationship between the landowner and the gardener and the fig tree. God works with what we have to offer. This parable offers us several fruits. It can serve to remind us to be more compassionate, to be more like the compassionate gardener and less like the impatient landowner. And it can serve to give hope to the hopeless. In addition to my morning observations of Marcessens, I was encouraged to seek out new buds on branches. Sure enough, there they were, still hard and tight, but the buds are there on some of the trees. Too many to count. New life is emerging, even as the withered, lifeless leaves hang on. Spring, new life, and hope are all around us. When the present days are difficult beyond understanding, we can let the gardener God tend to our needs, accepting time and nourishment as the gifts that they are. And we can offer the gifts of hope and compassion to others in our communities and around the world. I encourage us all to envision ourselves in each of these roles, the landowner, the gardener, and the fig tree, to feel compassion, to experience humility, to gain insight, to find clarity, direction, and purpose. In all the phases of our lives, may we endeavor to approach ourselves and others with compassion, patience, and care so that each and all may realize their full potential. Please stand in body or spirit as you're able and join in singing the first three verses of Abide With Me in our red hymnal number 487.
you see this? Our invitation to change this morning. God, you call us to step more deeply into ourselves as we amend and awaken to who you desire us to be. Let us acknowledge our transgressions in stillness and in silence so that we may prepare our hearts for change. We confess that we have not always brought forth good fruit. In the midst of chaos and frenzy, we have often lost our way. Our feet have strayed from the place where we met you. Our egos have kept us from seeing our missteps. Yet, with you, we know there is another chance for change. There is another opportunity to bear good fruit in a world full of spoiled and rotten produce and systems designed to kill. We are called to be the change that sustains generations. Let us lean with you into this chance for transformation. And I assure you each, God's grace and mercy abounds. God is with us in the change. Each of us is embraced, loved, affirmed, and set free. Amen. We come to the time where we offer our prayers either holding them in our hearts or offering them aloud to the community or typing them into the chat or unmuting on Zoom and, and joining your voice with ours. Our God is present and listening. I was made aware this week that Beryl Crosby of Hancock Point and Scarborough died um, one week ago today. Our hearts are with you. Sometimes news travels a little too slowly. We have prayers for hope and healing. Sharon Wilds recovering from foot surgery. Um, for Patty's Aunt Helen. For Ron and Doug's neighbors, Dave and Lori. For Fran and her grandson, Jake. Tamara and Andrew. Let's throw Austin in there too. <laughs> for Bruce's sister, Lynn. For Steve and Myrna. For Clayton and Marcia. For Annie and Reed. For Carolyn and Michael. For Kenny and Marcia. For Austin's cousin, Danny. For Renata, for Betty L, and for Betty J, and for Betty J's stepdaughter, Molly, and for Eleanor's stepdaughter, Holly. We continue our prayers of healing and hope for Tom and Judy's son, Andrew, and his family, for Danny and Clementine, for Vicki's brother, Royce, for Cynthia and Nancy with us this morning for all teachers and students, for all caregivers. Are there others online in the sanctuary? Tamara has your hand up too. First, first Peggy, with the microphone, please. Hold it right up to your lip. Yes, perfect. Um, I woke up this morning thinking of my beloved Aunt Barbara. And in her memory, um, I want to pray for all people who live difficult lives gracefully. Praying for all people who live difficult lives gracefully. I love that. Especially Aunt Barbara. So my joy is actually about Myrna and how much what happens in her yard brings me so much joy. Each day, there are herds of deer and turkeys and birds, and I always slow down when I drive by because I 
is always something magical happening mm -hmm. there. And I know it takes a lot of time and energy <laughs> to sometimes do that. And also, I heard the first peep of the woodcock last night in the meadow. <laughs> so they're back. I'd like to ask for prayers for our son-in-law, Pete, who's a pastor. Um, he has a parishioner whose best friend uh, died of cancer. He's only 38 years old. And as he was comforting the wife, a week later, the wife committed suicide. So he's lost both of his best friends. I wish I could remember his name, but for Pete and my friend. Prayers for Pete and those, that couple, and all of those that love them. I am of a small joy and that uh, in keeping with um, DJ's message this morning, I looked at my first crocus this morning. What crocus is? We offer all these prayers, and I don't. Oh, there it just popped up. Thank you. I thought I was looking. From Gina, a joy for Eamon Pansy's athletic gifts. He has finished his new ski season, very filled up and happy. <laughs> Joys. Thank you, Gina. Wonderful, Eamon. We offer prayers for those that do not wish to be named. For those having or recovering from surgery, those who suffer chronic pain, those awaiting diagnoses, those affected by memory loss, those living with depression, those suffering from addictions of any kind. And I offer prayers for Pat's family, for her good friend, family, Susie, Susie and her family in Utah and Idaho prayers especially today for them. And we hold up a time of silence. Oh God, help us to care for your creation in ways that make it possible for all to have enough food and water, clothing and shelter. Help us in all places torn apart by war, where human lives have been destroyed and deformed, where peace lies in ruins and hope is buried. O oh God, raise peace among us again. Build hope from the ground up. Restore in us and in the world's leaders the will and determination to make an end of war and a new beginning for justice and peace. O oh God, when we are lost, when we are sad and weighed down with regret or grief, when we are tired or sick in body, mind, or spirit, provide enough to sustain us for one more day. Oh God, sometimes we celebrate a new job, a new relationship, a new life, a new day of sobriety, a second chance. We give thanks to you for these blessings in our lives. We give thanks for the gift of healing after injury or illness, for laughter that bubbles up to replace our tears, for hope that spills its soothing light over the darkness of our despair. Be patient with us, we pray, in the varied landscapes of our lives. Make us patient with one another and even with ourselves. Do your good work within us, among us, and beyond us. O oh God, hear all of our prayers, spoken and silent, shared this day. And hear this prayer as we join our voices together. We pray the words Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
time to take our offering. Your, your gifts are welcome online, through the mail, or here this morning in the pews. As recipients of the generosity of God, let us be generous with each other and the community. ways this offering will bless this community we dedicate these gifts for the ways it will help us nurture caring relationships with our neighbors we dedicate these gifts let this offering and the works of our hands and feet be good fruit in the world please remain standing as you're able We'll sing, Lord, make me more holy from our black hymnal number 75.
invite you this week again to join me by repeating after me for our blessing. May love and strength be in our hands. May love and courage be in our hearts. May love and wisdom be in our minds. May God go with us and work through us. Today and in all of our days. Thank you.